12 firemen in Nichols Hills have said no thanks to the city's last contract proposal. They want to see a little more polish on the contract before they give it the okay. Nichols Hills firefighters protect the wealthiest area in Oklahoma, but they are paid below the comparative average, according to union statistics. The salary isn't the issue for the firemen. They are displeased with three other areas of their contract, holidays, sick leave, and residency requirements. According to the firemen's union agent, Nichols Hills has nothing to lose by conceding. The items that we're at impasse over would not have a direct economic effect on the city, and it just seems that they're stonewalling us on the basis that uh, we don't want to make these changes, not that they can't. But the city doesn't see it that way. Nichols Hill City Manager Doug Henley says the city has offered enough. Well, I think they need to sit down and really evaluate what the city council has granted them. And I think that the, the city is being extremely fair to them, and I think they've given them almost everything they've asked for uh, in the negotiation process. The fireman's contract expired the 1st of July. Negotiations are expected to resume soon, but if not, arbitrators will be called in to settle the contract dispute. Debbie Mash, Action 4, in Nichols Hills. Binger, a proud little Oklahoma town. It's the hometown of baseball great Johnny Bench. The sidewalks here haven't always looked like this, but the heavy rains received this year have created havoc for Main Street and other streets in this Caddo County community. Mayor Howard Hedrick says the rains ruined two watershed dams and about a dozen streets have been washed out. It's a real big problem. Every time it rains, or down the main street is uh, full of sand, mud. We clean it off and it rains again and it fills right back up. Even some problems with your side streets. Their side streets all washed out, full of dirt, holes, chug holes, all that. The runoff has also caused several sewer and water line breaks. They, this uh, particular one where we're standing, uh, I think he's put it in four times this, this spring, summer. This is Johnny Bench Field. Mayor Hedrick says a while back it was one of the best baseball fields in the state. But because of the continuous flooding, that's all changed. Mayor Hedrick is hoping with some federal money to get this field and his town back in top-notch condition. Ben McCain, Action 4, Vinger. Just got through talking to the civil defense director and they've got another front coming in and they're talking about more heavy rain this evening, this afternoon, this evening. So that's why we're getting our, you know, big equipment, heavy equipment out here in emergency vehicles, just in case we have to evacuate people out. And we'll probably, if we have to, we'll set up a some kind of emergency system. Probably here in the old Lacey School, well, this is where we did in 1975, we had a flood here. And the water was coming across 51 Highway and we set up emergency system here, and uh, we'll probably do the same thing again if that happens.
The state health department keeps close tabs on Oklahoma City's air quality. Technicians maintain 18 air monitoring stations around the metro area. Health officials are especially concerned about ozone and particulate matter levels. In the past, Oklahoma County has exceeded federal limits of those pollutants. However, state health officials say Oklahoma City's air has improved recently. Their monitors have only turned up one instance of excessive ozone in the past three years. That's good news for Oklahoma City. Ozone is, uh, causes respiratory distress in the uh, young and the old and uh, those that uh, are extremely active outside, out of doors. And uh, it's also what we call a welfare-related pollutant. It causes the tires to uh, crack and paint to uh, dull. State health officials hope their figures will prompt the EPA to take Oklahoma County off the federal bad air list for ozone. Counties which have not complied with the federal standards by the end of this year could face government penalties. Scott Wallace, Action for the State Health Department. AmCare's communication center stays busy answering calls from people needing quick medical attention. On any given day, the ambulance service will respond on hundreds of calls. Up until now, it has been impossible for the deaf to call AmCare, but a new telecommunications device called the TDD is changing that. By using the TDD, a deaf person calls a special number for AmCare. After the phone rings, dispatchers connect the receiver to the TDD. The caller will also place his or her phone receiver on the TDD and type the emergency message. Whatever the deaf person types will appear on AmCare's TDD's display screen. TDD units start at $595 and can be purchased at most hearing aid dealerships. Or by contacting the Central Oklahoma Association for the Deaf and Hearing Impaired, you can receive an interest-free loan toward the purchase of a TDD. Technicians say if the deaf can communicate their emergency needs in a more detailed manner, AmCare can do a better and quicker job when responding on their call. For more information about the TDD, call 236 5513. Amcare feels even if TTD just saves one life, it is worth having. Ed Stewart, Action 4 in Northeast Oklahoma City. Amcare's communication center stays busy answering calls from people needing quick medical attention. On any given day, the ambulance service will respond on hundreds of calls. Up until now, it has been impossible for the deaf to call AmCare, but a new telecommunications device called the TDD is changing that. By using the TDD, a deaf person calls a special number for AmCare. After the phone rings, dispatchers connect the receiver to the TDD. The caller will also place his or her phone receiver on the TDD and type the emergency message. Whatever the deaf person types will appear on AmCare's TDD's display screen. TDD units start at $595 and can be purchased at most hearing aid dealerships. Or by contacting the Central Oklahoma Association for the Deaf and Hearing Impaired, you can receive an interest-free loan toward the purchase of a TDD. Technicians say if the deaf can communicate their emergency needs in a more detailed manner, AmCare can do a better and quicker job when responding on their call. For more information about the TDD, call 236-5513. AmCare feels even if TTD just saves one life, it is worth having. Ed Stewart, Action 4 in Northeast Oklahoma City.
the location because patience was, in fact, on the committee. As I was listening to your staff, we have main features of House Bill 1677 that are the, that call for the mandatory suspension of license. They increase the penalties for driving on revoked or suspended licenses and the restriction of license renewal for repeat offenders at a longer period of time. So the average public is not aware of this terrible carnage that's taking place in our highway. So these hearings, and this being the first of a series we're going to hold, uh, is an attempt to try to get the public awareness up to a point where they realize what we're doing. Laws are not well enforced uh, in some cases, not because it's malicious, but there are so many problems that the police have, and so many problems the courts have, and the drunk driver... Uh, has not been a number one priority. Thousands of patients undergo medical treatment each year. And every year, some patients sue their doctor for the care they were given. But statistically, less than 1% of the state's 3,300 doctors will have a malpractice claim brought against them this year. Percentage-wise, patients in Oklahoma have less tendency to file claims against their physicians than they do in other states. I think it is a reflection of the quality of care and the relationship between the physician and the patient. Uh, they just seem to get along better here than they do in, in, in other parts of the country. Fewer claims mean lower rates for malpractice insurance and thus lower medical bills for the patient. On the average, practitioners in Oklahoma paid less than $700 last year for malpractice insurance. That same coverage cost doctors in other states an average of nearly $2,500. But in the long run, do lower rates this mean less protection for patients? Attorney Howard Berry Jr. says few patients have success with malpractice claims because the legal requirements are too tough. Right now, the patient has to bring a doctor in and he has to testify against his colleague and it just makes it very uh, difficult to do. And as a result of that, we have to go out to other jurisdictions and the juries here are, have a tendency to believe uh, the local doctors. Debbie Mash, Action 4 in North Oklahoma City. You're not going to handle it, he's plain old. Well, because school is fixing to start uh, in a couple of weeks, and then we'll have large groups of kids all together uh, that will be able to pass the disease from one person to another if we have anybody with the disease in the schoolroom. Right now, we also we have many kids in daycare centers, so we need to uh, get those kids immunized in the daycare centers so that they cannot spread the disease from one person to another.
we have many children that are unvaccinated and do not have the immunity to measles that they need to be. And since we do have measles in the county, we need to have them immunized against measles at this time. It's an extremely dangerous measles because the children get so very, very ill. It can go to middle ear infections, to pneumonia, to uh, encephalitis with complete uh, brain damage and even death. The Silva Mind Control Method. Graduates from this course have claimed enhanced intuition, mind healing powers, and even a certain sense of good luck. We came to an Oklahoma City site today where the mind control is being taught, and we talked to the inventor, Jose Silva himself, about what his method is all about. Jose Silva is a Mexican-American who became interested in electronics at an early age. This interest led him, strangely enough, to the study of mind control. The brain, an organ that functions with electrical pulses, started Silva thinking, and he began to study the concept of mind control. Silva's version of it is a bit different than what is generally thought of when the term mind control is mentioned. What is advocated by Silva and his followers is self-control of your own mind through a system of meditation. Silva also thinks the key to greater intelligence is the recognition of both hemispheres of the mind. Function of the right brain hemisphere, it has been found now that the right brain hemisphere is the intuitive hemisphere to think with. We use them to move about and sensory nerve system and sensory motor, motor nerve systems are there and so on, left handed, right handed and so on. But to think with, yes, we use both brain hemispheres to analyze our problems with instead of just one. Silva's daughter Laura says the Silva kids were looked upon differently in the beginning. To me, in my mind, since we did it all the time, I thought everybody practiced this kind of stuff. Uh, but we were unique, I suppose. According to Silva, only 10% of the population uses both hemispheres of the brain, and they are the creative people, the geniuses. But he hopes through further seminars and lectures he can increase that number. Already 3 million people are believers in the Silver Mind Control Method. Kevin Ogle, Action 4. Anybody feeds you? He's getting mad now. So I'm getting mad now. Yeah. You'd be mad too if you were overcrowded. Too many babies and not enough room. That's the problem at Mercy Health Center. The neonatal unit has become so full, sometimes there's not a bassinet to spare. The need for expansion can be attributed to a number of things. The baby boom and the fact more young couples are moving to the north side of town and the fact that there are a lot more obstetricians and they send some of their pregnant women to Mercy Health Center. We're uh, very crowded. Uh, for instance, today we're, uh, we have 38 babies and we're licensed for 32. Uh, our labor and delivery is full right now and if we have any more mothers come in, they'll have to be placed in the hallway. The hospital wants to spend over two and a half million dollars to add on three new floors to handle the baby boom. That would mean 16 new bassinets for the intensive care area and 16 more for the well babies. The number of babies coming into the hospital has been increasing by 22 percent a year. The expansion project, if approved, wouldn't be completed until 1983. 
and the hospital feels with the baby boom the way it is, there's no time or room to spare. Bella Shaw, Action 4 at Mercy Health Center. The nation's governors are meeting annually faced with increasing problems. The economy, the environment, crime, the quality of life for their constituents. Problems with solutions often intertwined with the federal government. New federalism was brought up during the opening news conference by conference chairman Snelling. It was debated at length. So was the balanced budget amendment. Conference officials were disappointed neither the president nor the vice president attended, but they did get a chance to grill agriculture secretary John Block concerning grain sales and Mr. Reagan's most controversial cabinet member, interior secretary James Watt on energy. The energy producers lost a battle over the price of future natural gas. The user states want to keep the price down for the consumers. The governors and their ladies took a break from the grind of seeking solutions to their problems with a state dinner. Nobody had any complaints about that. Then a final session for the record. The governors failed to get a consensus on a balanced federal budget, but new Chairman Matheson of Utah says they won't give up. There was no disagreement and is no disagreement among the governors with respect to their unified commitment to address the balancing of the federal budget. There is a legitimate difference of opinion among governors as to how to get there, as there is in the Congress. Charles, on other issues, the uh, governors decided to go, at least for now, their own way concerning developing some kind of a federal state relationship plan, and they said that they want to become very involved if any oil exploration might be going on in any federally owned wilderness land that might be in their individual states. But, George, the bottom line is that the governors can take their stands on these issues, but they are, in effect, a little more than a lobbying group. They do not write federal law. They don't write federal policy. And unless there are major constitutional changes on the federal level, which is unlikely, the degree of their influence is going to be at the discretion of the president and the Congress. And as citizens of an individual state, we have a definite stake in this whole yes. thing. With Charles Snitzer, this is George Tomic reporting from Shangri-La, the site of the National Governors Conference in Northeast Oklahoma. report on crime in Oklahoma last week and it came up with the Oklahoma City Police Department divisions on homicide right and you had a choice as to whether you wanted to commit it in Oklahoma where there was a uh, likelihood again all the governor has to do if they recommend him is sign that parole that the vast majority of people that we arrest for armed robbery uh, murders rapes and so on have had uh, previous arrests and incarcerations as a result. We did do a very limited study in which we found that 27 individuals within the past year that were rearrested for felony crimes ranging from murder down to burglary uh, had committed 168 felony crimes while out on parole.
sounds like some... a nice snap and right. Well, if you're superstitious, you might be a bit apprehensive about being out tonight on Friday the 13th. But these folks aren't. They're from the Oklahoma City Astronomy Club, and they're gearing up for one of the biggest light shows of the year, Compliments of Mother Nature. The light show is the Perside Meteor Shower that shows up over Oklahoma skies about this time every year. And one of the best things about this particular display is that it is visible to the naked eye. In fact, according to experts, the shower is easier seen without a telescope. As a matter of fact, a telescope is not a very good thing to use to watch for meteors for the simple reason that they go so fast, it's very hard to find it in a telescope. In fact, the best thing to do is get a lounge chair or a big comfortable blanket and pillow and just lay straight out on the ground and face towards the northeast, northeast or straight overhead after midnight would be about the best time. This afternoon, a star party was held at the Omniplex. People who showed up early for a look at the meteor shower were treated to exhibits and a special lecture dealing with the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Wyrick says this year's shower should be better than in years past, so you have about two hours from now to find a comfortable spot and watch the show. Kevin Ogle, Action 4. If I sit down and just close the doors, well, this location will eventually pull the other three locations down and we'll virtually be bankrupt. And it's, it's ridiculous. And uh, we've done uh, what, you know, we should do as far as getting independent people out here. It costs money each time we get them out here. And they tell us the drains are free, that the city's backing up on us. The three victims' bodies were discovered around 10 o'clock this morning at their home lying on the living room floor. Dead are 11-year-old Kevin Randall, his older brother, 16-year-old Charlie, and their father, Charles Randall. They were found by a friend of the boys. There was another child there that was a friend of one of the boys. He was spending the, the weekend with them. Uh, this morning, he woke up uh, to the sound of the phone and discovered the bodies in the front room of the house. He left and called the authorities. Authorities from Canadian County, Oklahoma City, and the OSBI responded to the call. Agents spent the day going door to door in the surrounding area looking for leads while technicians searched the house. A gun was found in the living room near the bodies, but it's not known if it was the murder weapon. An OSBI spokesman says the mother who was not at the house has now been located in Piedmont and is being questioned by authorities. Sherry Sellers, Action 4 in Piedmont.
I don't think we should neglect the fact that there are other chemicals in Vietnam other than Agent Orange, because a lot of people automatically focus on that one thing. Uh, but it's a vote of confidence from the, the citizen soldier people who have a very strong lobby in Washington, D.C. Uh, they wrote me a very nice letter, and I'll see that y'all get it, stating that we have the best opportunity. Hate to see us blow up. We, we may be the showpiece for the states, the whole United States.